the rubber bandits are out. Paul Childerly joins catty expert Wayne Martin to knock down squirrels and more. I'll tell you what, mate, I'll shake your hand for that one. Popsy Baylor twine around your trouser legs, it's rat demonium with the Suffolk and Norfolk rat pack. Devon and Cornwall police are not giving up. They have sent armed officers to another shooter to revoke his certificate. We report on that. With the clay shooting season around the corner, we are giving away a newly launched clay cart from claycart.co.uk, priced at £250. We have news, we have hunting YouTube. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Stay up, boy! <laughs> This morning, Paul is having his catapult fitting. Right, let's get this out then, mate. So we've got the new... Ooh, green. The new design one. <laughs> the new ergonomic Evo Ergo. Oh yeah, I like it. Now, you might think it's just rubber and balls, <laughs> but on. you'd be way off, Don't literally. On. Wayne is taking all sorts of measurements to get it right. So put your hand to your face where you would draw to. Yeah. That's where you draw to and that's where you shoot? Yep. Yeah, so we're going to measure from your fork tip to your anchor point. Oh. <laughs> Forked it round point, on, which is <laughs> actually the same as mine, about 81 centimetres. So this band has a stretch ratio of between four and a half and five, depending on the weather. So we need to get the active length, which is 81 centimetres, and divide it by about, in this weather today, about, about 4.7. And that will give us your active length. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> You see we're not quite maxed out. So he's got the same draw length as what I've got, which is 81 centimetres to there. So we've just got, that's about maximum there. So we're not quite maximum of the band, which is exactly what we wanted. With the Evo Ergo Forester fitted, it's time to get some practice down at the range. It takes some fine tuning, but after half a dozen shots, Paul is plinking well. Oh! <laughs> he found it. So remember that anchor point, yeah? Accuracy is one thing, consistency is another. I feel the bounce, good me. Last few ripples, no pressure. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> That's better. As a good technique is crucial, Wayne explains one of the tips he's passed on to Paul. When the ball's in the pouch, just make sure that it's not like that. Like you want to make. See how the bands are skewed? So that these two bits aren't lined up. Oh, I see. So that means you're going to get an uneven balance of power. I see, I see, yeah? I see. So if these are perfectly lined up, you're going to get you know, a symmetrical draw, so you're going to have a symmetrical amount of power through the ball. Whereas if they're like this, the gotcha. bottom band's going to have more power than the top band, right, which is going to send it. Right, yeah? Band. Beauty. Oh, ding Beauty. Dong. Ding dong. <laughs> quite quite uh, satisfactory, that is. Yeah. Cool. Wait till you hunt with it. You think hitting, the hitting the target is satisfactory, but going out and hunting, yeah. properly hunting with one is the next level. Yes, perfect. It's so raw. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. such a, a primitive thing. Is, and yeah. to walk into a woods with a catapult and walk out with dinner, yeah. it's an achievement. Time for us to go hunting. At the time of filming, we were coming to the end of the game season, so squirrels and cock pheasants are on our quarry list. The pheasants should be the simpler of the two to hunt. To make life easier, Paul has brought the Hick Micro Griffin Spotter to check the trees and the cover. We've seen Wayne using his Hick Micro unit in the same way. So I need you Hick thermals as well. Are they been useful for this type of shooting? Very good for this sort of shooting, definitely. Yeah, without a doubt. Uh, especially with all this sort of brush you've got around, things can easily hold up in these brambles, mainly pheasants really, that hold up in the brambles, obviously uh, rabbits. We've seen a lot of uh, water deer. We've got really close to them, sort of 10 metres or so. You wouldn't even know they were there unless you had the thermal on them. Really, really good in this sort of situation. Photographer and cameraman Carlos Carubia is also with us and takes over the thermal to film through it and guide Wayne into heat sources. Got to go slowly. Oh, that reaches over the top. <laughs> <laughs> you never would have seen that, that thermal. <laughs> never. <laughs> he'll come round. If I'll go around the other side, he'll come round this side. Then we hear Paul up ahead. He's made contact with a squirrel. Oh. 
It's gone down a hole. It's gone down this hole here. It bolts for the bushes, then makes it to ground. Well, not there. You ain't getting that out, mate. You need to put your hand in there, surely. What? You're joking, children. What happens next is unexpected. Give it a laugh, have a laugh. No, here. you don't put it. Oh, hit my hole! Hooray! <laughs> Hooray! Ar, 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 ar. Come on, matey. <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. Why? What? Oh my god. Oh gonna... my god. Jay, I've got a priest here. Tree running. That's the most bottle I've ever seen. What's that? Old three fingers children, he strikes again. <laughs> his shoulder yeah. went whack and it whacked, whacked him right. He come down, he caught a branch and just managed to scurry into the hole. <laughs> How do you know he's only tail up as opposed to teeth up? He ran down that way, didn't he? <sighs> I'll tell you what, mate, I'll shake your hand for that one. Bloody right. hell. Good shot and good retrieve, Jesus. That's worthy of any terrier. Right up underneath. Did you get him on the... Yeah, sort of up underneath so the ribs he, here. He's running and he, um, obviously the cameraman would be busy talking about cameras yeah. and <laughs> best lenses and that sort of stuff. Doing his hair. And uh, he came out that side there by that dray, went out there and he, he jumped across. He went to one branch and I thought, I must give it a go because he's going. And my, and my wingman weren't with me. <laughs> and um, it actually just took him right off the branch, spun him round. And as he did coming down, he grabbed the branch and then got, gained himself and then yeah, and as he went on, he then he struggled, and that's where he come down to find a hole. Yeah. Pretty exciting, <laughs> wasn't it? Pretty brilliant. Hey. <laughs> well, I never had you pegged for getting a squirrel today. Did I? Oh. No, I didn't. Oh, you, is this, with, is this uh, like the, the premium game, is it? It is, mate, with a catapult. <laughs> these are tough. These are tough. Yeah. Really tough. Look at that, eh? Got a sweat on. You have got a sweat on. <laughs> you couldn't let him go. you got to eat that. Thanks. <laughs> I'll do anything but eat squirrel. <laughs> Carlos also captures Paul's skills through the griffin. Well done, mate. You nutter. Well done. <laughs> Why? I can't believe he put well, his hand down there. I'll tell you what it is. I, right, so basically, when I was a young boy, um, I went on a, um, a, a course down the gang service, as it was called then, and it was um, Squirrel with the Forest Commission. And they baited all these traps, and you had to, to pass a course, you had to dispatch, you mainly dispatch a squirrel by your hand. So you empty it into a, into a hessian sack, and then you take the sack round, all round, peel it all the way back, hold the screw on the head, clean kill. There's one thing doing it in a hessian sack where you've got an idea of where its head is. It's another thing putting your hand blind down a hole and dragging it out. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? That, that's a completely <laughs> next level for me. There's not a chance this, I don't know if you'd get me to put my hand in there. Not with a squirrel in there. Well, I did a few like dummy runs. Like, we, sure, yeah, but still, Christ. <laughs> that was impressive. That was impressive. <laughs> <laughs> Makes it a bit of fun, doesn't it? Yeah. Cool. Unreal. Brilliant. Wow. So is that is that still inside it? You think? No, that would have put a hole inside it. It won't have pierced the skin. But well, I'm saying that it may have pierced the skin because there's blood on the outside, obviously. So it probably has pierced the skin somewhere, but the ball won't be inside. No. The, the the mass damage will be here. There will be a hole here. Yeah. So it really would have caused a lot of internal damage. <laughs> <laughs> We're all a little bit gobsmacked by Childerly's gamekeeping moves. <laughs> Ar, 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 ar. Come on, mate. Opportunities come and go. It's only after many miles of walking the woods that Wayne claims a well-earned pheasant in the open with a headshot at 20 yards. The end of the season, the birds are flighty, they, they know the score, but we managed to creep around the corner here, use the bins as our sort of camouflage, if you like, and sneak up on a few that were feeding her on some corn in here. And this one was about 15 yards. Sat up nicely, sort of side onto us, and took an 11 millimeter steel right in the temple. It, I knew he was out, knew where the ball struck, knew he was dead, so I sort of hung back and hoped that we could get another shot, possibly get a shot at another one. I mean, for you, that was almost close quarters. I mean, I don't think I've filmed you shoot anything so close before. No, normally. but that, that's the thing. Yards. Yeah, that's the beauty with the catapult, though, isn't it? You know, 15 yards or 30 yards, it's still a sporting shot. I mean, it's never, you never get an easy shot with a catapult. You know, so even at 15 yards, I'm over the moon. A clean kill, right on the back of the head. Yeah, couldn't be happy with it, really. Awesome. Enjoyed your day? Very much so.
<laughs> and how do you think the boys performing? Very good. And then he's nearly hit one here oh just a minute ago. Oh my goodness. <laughs> As it was running. <laughs> Beginner's luck, I think. Getting dangerous this man. Paul has definitely made the most of his first outing with his newly fitted catapult. Not bad for a novice. For more about Wayne's Caddyshack range, go to caddyshack.co.uk and to learn more about the Hick Micro range of thermal spotters, go to eliteoptical.co.uk. Thank you, Wayne and Paul. Next up, you can hear the twang of elastic as David takes his seat on the Field Sports Channel news stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. A ban on trophy imports is still on the table in the Westminster Parliament. The government looks like it will drop plans to ban imports of fur and foie gras into the UK. The proposals were due to be part of the Animals Abroad Bill. There are reports that several cabinet ministers have raised concerns about the measures. Sources say that although a final decision hasn't been made, it's likely the ban will be parked to allow other parts of the bill to succeed. DEFRA Minister Zach Goldsmith's personal plan to ban the imports of animal parts has produced angry headlines around the world as African nations condemn it. 13 gun dogs were among the victims of winter storms that caused havoc across the UK. The pedigree animals died when a tree blew over knocking a power line onto a kennel block at Cuckavalda Gun Dogs in North Yorkshire, electrocuting two Cocker Spaniels and 11 Labradors. Despite the damage caused by storms Dudley, Eunice and Franklin, there were also miraculous escapes. A horse trapped by three falling trees in Hampshire didn't suffer a scratch. The 10-year-old mare was sedated before firefighters used chainsaws to cut away the branches. Birds also had a lucky escape by flying off when aviaries were destroyed at the Devon Bird of Prey Centre. A memorial fund set up to help the family of a Scottish gamekeeper killed in an off-road accident is receiving huge support. Matthew Burden died in hospital in Aberdeen after a collision. Set up to help his fiancée Rhiannon and three children, it has raised more than £23,000. 280 donations took pledges past the initial target of £5,000. Police are investigating the crash on the 29th of January and are appealing for anyone with information to contact them. There's another appeal underway to raise money to pay a legal bill of a farmer who protected his property by flipping a car off his farmland in County Durham. Robert Hooper has to pay legal expenses even though he was cleared of dangerous driving and criminal damage by Durham Crown Court. The 57-year-old pleaded not guilty. He said he acted as he felt frightened and threatened. Mr Hooper argued that an Englishman's home is his castle. The court heard that 21-year-old Charlie Burns punched the farmer twice before Mr Hooper removed the car. More than £5,000 has already been pledged towards the goal of £20,000. If the crowdfunding campaign exceeds its target, the extra money will go to projects that help rural communities. Two men have been fined for catching crayfish in England. The trappers were found at midnight on the River Derwent in Derbyshire. Police arrested them when they threw traps into the water. Officers found further crates and a coil of wire in a vehicle nearby. Magistrates fined J. Awa Shu An Jong and Wee Ki Lu. They were also ordered to pay costs. Although signal crayfish are an invasive species, it's illegal to trap them without a license, as they carry a disease which can infect the native crayfish species. Trapping can also increase the population of signal crayfish because it removes the larger crayfish which predate on the smaller ones. Vegetarians have come together with omnivores to condemn a TV commercial. Placed by vegetarian campaigner Viva, the commercial features a piglet and a meat cleaver. Viva says people don't make the connection between animals and what's on their plate. The ad ran on the Channel 4 TV network, which campaigns against livestock farming. In 2019, Channel 4 invested an undisclosed sum it confirmed was seven figures in plant-based food processor, the Meatless Farm Company in Yorkshire. The broadcaster took equity in the company in exchange for commercial airtime. Police have seized a wildcat from an animal protection group in Wales. Officers took the one-year-old from Wildcat Haven in Conway County. Members of the group say police gave them no warning or explanation. It claims it planned to release the animal found injured in the Highlands. The Scottish wildcat is one of the world's most endangered felines, with only around 35 purebred cats believed to be left in the wild. 
Nature Scott says the possession or release of a wildcat outside its native area requires a licence. A raccoon dog is on the loose in Wales. Natural Resources Wales describes the animal as unpredictable. A relative of the fox, raccoon dogs are omnivores and compete for food with foxes and badgers. They're native to Japan, China and Siberia. The animals have been kept in the UK as exotic pets, but since 2019 it's been illegal to buy or sell them. Anti-hunting campaigners are on hunger strike in Norway in protest at an extension of a licence to cull wolves. Four people blocked the entrance of the Environment Ministry in Oslo. Others claim they won't eat until the hunt ends on the first day of March. The Norwegian Court of Appeal approved and extended licences for hunters to kill 51 wolves. Thanks to Per Holmseth for the story. An American has been jailed and given a lifetime hunting ban for poaching nine trophy bucks. Justin Ernst from Michigan pleaded guilty to five charges, including illegally possessing a firearm, taking white-tailed deer and obtaining a hunting license when he wasn't eligible to hold one. The 33-year-old was sentenced to eight months in prison and the loss of hunting privileges for life. He was also ordered to pay a $25,000 fine. Thanks to Mark Corney for the story. There was surprise for scientists in Australia when they fitted tracking devices to five magpies. They discovered a new type of social behaviour in the birds. The magpies helped each other remove the trackers. The birds outsmarted the researchers by helping each other escape the electronic devices. The scientists say this kind of cooperation proves magpies are intelligent, social and altruistic. Others point out that it shows that the birds don't like tracking devices. And finally, a 500 pound black bear known as Hank the Tank is leaving a trail of destruction around homes in California. Hank is breaking into properties in South Lake Tahoe and more than 100 people have called the police about the bear's rampage. Police and officials from the California Department of Fish and Wildlife have fired paintballs, beanbags, sirens and tasers at the bear. They say his junk food habit may be the reason he's grown so large. The average black bear weighs just 200 pounds. Despite his unwelcome visits, some local people don't want him shot as they say he's sweet and doesn't growl. You are now to date with Field Sports, Channel News, stalking stories, fishing for facts. Next up, ratting mayhem with the Suffolk Norfolk Rat Pack. Forget driven grouse and wild boar. For sheer excitement, nothing beats a good day's ratting. We're out with the Suffolk and Norfolk rat pack as they tackle a huge rat infestation on a pig farm. Nice big one. It looks brutal, and it is. But Ed Cook, who runs the pack, says it's not just efficient, it's the most environmentally friendly way of dealing with the pests. It's a very traditional method of pest control. It is great fun and it's great, it's probably the best exercise a dog can have. It is a very specific and direct way of catching the rats. Uh, poison, to be honest, you put poison down, you'll, you'll kill the rats, but then that then leaks into the ecosystem as well. So the purpose of this visit, we're, we're at a pig farm, um, outdoor pig unit, where obviously there's, there's feed, there's water, and there's straw. So um, sort of the three main attractants for rats. There's another one here. Oh, here, here, here. There he's in that gap. Go on, help. Go on, he's out of the bag. Here, here, here. So we've got a teleporter in. There you go. 
what we'll do, we'll use the dogs to, uh, to mark. We've got some smaller terriers um, and we've got some terriers with slightly longer legs. So we've got sort of three, a three-tier attack, really. We've got the, the smaller Norfolk-type dogs in the middle. Um, they're really sensitive noses and all trained up to, to know exactly what they're looking for. We've got the slightly longer ones, we've got a couple of Lakeland types um, and, and border types as well. Uh, with slightly longer legs, so they've got a bit of a better turn of speed if the rat does get away from the smaller ones. Then we've got our sort of third line of defence, which are the lurchers um, or whippets that we've got as well. Um, and they, if anything gets away from the smaller dogs, they'll just clear up. Twinkle the lurcher is deadly on rats with a phenomenal turn of speed. Come on, mate. I've gone all... I've got about... <laughs> Hey. Here's Twinkle's owner, Gwyn. The mum was three quarter grey and a quarter collie, and the dad was a really quite a famous um, uh, racing whippet. Okay. Um, she's obviously taken more after the mum because she's quite big, but she's exceptionally fast. There goes, there goes, and there goes, there goes, there goes. she can catch most things. You know, she's, been ex she's been exceptionally um, successful over the years. But she's eight now, and it's, it's always sad when they get to that age because you know in a couple of years' time they'll be retired and that's it. And hence the reason for getting this little one, is this is a... His dad was a full Bedlington, and its mum's a Whippet, and they're both working dogs. Um, but she's very young at the moment. Um, she's only four and a half months old. Right. So she's just out to, you know, just to witness things, get used to all the noise and watch the rats come out. She, okay. she won't pick them up yet, and I don't want her to, really. Because you don't really do not want a, a very young dog bitten by a rat because it puts them off for life. I want her to be soft-mouthed with the rabbits and obviously kill the rats. The first time she got a rat, the rat bit her, and that was it. So she worked out that actually you had to kill her. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good dog. Might be another one. There's another one! There it is, there it is! There it is up top! Quite a lot get past the terriers, and that's her job really is to pick them up when they get past the terriers. Today, Gwyn is giving his ferrets an outing. Um, really, I'm a ferreting man, you know, rabbiting, but we haven't got any rabbits. We've had uh, rabbit hemorrhagic disease in Suffolk for about six or seven years, and I, I used to go out, all the farms around this area I used to be ferreting, and you know, we should get anything between 30 and 80 a day. Um, and now you'd be lucky to get eight. I actually, if I was offered a day's pheasant shooting or a really good day's ratting, I go for a good day's ratting every time. You've run away, it's happy. I released it. I'm quite keen on sort of you know, promoting this as a way of environmentally friendly way of controlling the animals. You know, I used to be a pig specialist, so you know, I know exactly what diseases that rats can bring to the pigs. Rats will urinate all the time. They don't have a bladder to speak of. And you know, so they're constantly spreading um, lepto, um, salmonella, and without getting rid of the rats, you know, it's very difficult to control the spread of disease through a pig in. You hear it, it's got it, it's got it, it's got it. Oh, when they don't let go, they don't let go. You've got to put me in water, haven't you? Yeah, to be honest, I've done it by rats. Go on. Yeah, I think you can safely count that one as being dead. We really need a dead rat here, don't we? Just to draw her out. You might think they'd be worried about anties, but the Rat Pack proudly shares their exploits on YouTube, Facebook and Instagram. Yeah, we're very proud online um, and, and proud to show people what we're doing. And it's uh, the, the comments that we get, you know, it, it takes them back to their, their grandfather's day and that sort of thing. And it's sort of a, one of those traditional methods of pest controls and field sports that we all don't want to lose. We think it's really important. And by showing people, a lot of people get on board and their, their, their sort of their mindset goes away from poison and then towards dog work uh, when they see actually the speed of it and, and how efficient it is. But 99.9% .9 of the comments are all positive. People see it as a, a quick and humane uh, way of getting rid of the rodents. So people 
everywhere are around rats and they cause untold amounts of damage, especially out in places like this. So we're just saving the farmer money, that sort of thing, and keeping the poisons out of the ecosystem. The antis, to be honest with you, aren't any worry to us. In fact, we'd, we've been quite open in the past that if someone does have a problem, they can come and have a look and come and see what we do because it will change people's opinion on pest control. Links to the Suffolk and Norfolk Rat Pack social media in the description below. And to find out more about joining the Field Sports Nation, go to fieldsportschannel.tv slash membership. Thanks, the ratters. And there's a link to their YouTube channel in the description below. Now, we thought Devon and Cornwall Police had given up seizing guns. Well, they haven't. Here's Deborah Hadfield with the latest on that story. Police knocking on doors in the dark to seize guns in the southwest is becoming an all too common story. British shooters feel that police are punishing them as a knee jerk reaction to a shooting in Plymouth last August. Jake Davison, who had a shotgun certificate, killed five people in Keam in six minutes before turning his shotgun on himself. Cornish hunter Nigel Doney has been shooting for 40 years. He had an unexpected police visit after he sold one of his guns. Mr Doney claims that officers took his remaining gun because he couldn't produce his certificate. It was a way being processed by the police. Absolutely gutted because, uh, you know, obviously I messed up all, all my plans for this month because we, we were supposed to be going away this month. Uh, I stalked him with a friend up in Cambridgeshire. But I was just co concerned on what, for what reason they, they, they took it. Obviously, that's what confused me because obviously I hadn't done, no, I hadn't done nothing wrong. I hadn't been involved with nothing. Cornish gun shop Ian Hodge Field Sports purchased Mr. Doney's gun. We've noticed really since Christmas a dramatic increase in customers, um, new and unknown to us just phoning up randomly saying my guns are going to be taken away the police have been banging on the door wanting to take my guns away seemingly for no real reason maybe something that happened 10 15 years ago and it's it's, it's getting ridiculous now we, we just can't take any more guns in hardly uh, we're holding guns for people while they're appealing and so on some people just want to give up as an industry we are losing a, a tremendous amount of people which it does make you wonder if there isn't an ulterior motive. The Independent Office of Police Conduct issued two disciplinary notices to Devon and Cornwall Constabulary staff for issuing the mass murderer with a shotgun certificate. Now police are taking it out on shooters. Mr Hodge says the gun seizures are having an effect on his business. As well as problems such as Mr Doney's, the police action is making country people nervous. We've noticed now People are coming in and normally they would look at a rifle and say, oh, I'll put a variation in and get that. Then they realise it's going to take anything from six weeks to six months and they say, oh, no, I'll leave it go. So obviously we've lost the sale um, and shotgun licences are taking a long time. People are getting fed up, waiting. And it's just, it's not correct. Something needs to be done. The Home Office has caused part of the problem. Home Secretary Priti Patel revised the guidance to police forces on gun licensing in November 2021. Since then, media claims about how many guns Devon and Cornwall police are seizing range from a handful to up to 50 a day. Between October 2021 and February 2022, half a dozen ordinary shooters across Devon, Dorset and Cornwall covered by the Constabulary Firearms Licensing, approached Field Sports Channel. They tell stories in interviews about how police turned up on their doorsteps, often in darkness, always armed, and sometimes without a letter of revocation. Similar cases are taking place across the rest of the UK too. The police are looking to tighten up their procedures, but also it's, a, it's about trying to repair some reputational damage not just Devon and Cornwall, but police in general, as we've seen in recent weeks, the, the reputation of police are, is, is plummeting and anything they can do to try and repair that and to gain the trust of the public um, would, be, uh, would be advantageous to them. So I think the police are looking to repair their reputation, give the appearance of making things a bit safer by probably clamping down a bit more zealously on 
individuals who they think there may be an opportunity to take the guns and rifles off of. Ian says police have limited powers to seize guns. He advises people to be aware of their rights if armed officers arrive at their door. The police don't have a, a right in general to enter your home. Certain rules have to apply. Now they can enter to protect life and limb, they can enter to arrest you for an arrestable offence, they can enter um, amongst other things to execute a search warrant or to, um, to, to secure evidence. Now if you have a licence that allows you to have a certain gun and that gun is on the licence, until that licence is revoked there's no reason why you shouldn't have it and that is your property and it belongs to you. We covered one story about target shooter Chris Hart from Plymouth, who successfully turned away officers on his doorstep, which gave him time to move his firearms to a friendly RFD, so the police could not seize them. His appeal is ongoing. We don't have to let the police into our homes. Now, if they turn up and say, firearms licence has been revoked, here it is, or they turn up with a search warrant saying, oh, I have a search warrant, and um, I have the ability to seize your guns as evidence, then you don't have to let the police in and you don't have to give up your guns. Because of course, once you have given them up voluntarily and they've got them, it's really, really hard to get them back because they don't want you to have them. From deer stalkers to target shooters to pheasant shooters, Devon and Cornwall police are seizing guns from ordinary people. Armed officers visited an 80-year-old farmer in the Tamar Valley 10 months after he'd put in his renewal. He told reporters that police had delayed his certificate renewal because they were waiting for a medical certificate. Instead of asking for a Section 7 certificate extension, he handed in his firearms. That didn't stop officers turning up at his home in a threatening manner, demanding he surrender his guns again. Devon and Cornwall Firearms Licensing is in such turmoil it has lost the records of the earlier surrender. And I think as a group, you know, around here, and we, we spoke about this earlier, there's, there's not a more law-abiding bunch than the people in this room. Everybody has to abide by the law if you want to have a shotgun licence or a rifle. And we're, a, we're an easy prey um, for the police to clamp down on. It looks like they're doing something, uh, and it looks like they're making the country safer. I don't think there's anybody here who could go crying to a general member of the public saying, it's not fair he's took my guns, because people, there was always a question, do you need them, should you have them? Uh, and it's not a right written into our laws. The Tamar farmer, who wants to remain anonymous, is one of thousands who are struggling to renew their firearms certificates because of delays. Basque's Firearms Department warns firearms licensing across England and Wales is close to collapsing, with at least seven police licensing departments suspending grant applications. It believes there could be many more, and there's no way of knowing if grant applications are still being processed. It's a similar story with variations too. Basque's advice is to submit a request for new certificates or changes as early as possible, as much as 16 weeks ahead of your renewal date. A Freedom of Information request by the media revealed only 164 licences that had been revoked were returned by police between 2019 and 2021. Most Devon, Dorset and Cornwall shooters who've had their guns seized are repealing. It takes time and money. Ian says if you own a gun, knowing your rights is now essential. People are contacted by the police saying we want to take your guns. Just ask the reasons. Is my licence being revoked? Um, why? What's changed between now and when it was allowed to ha when it was um, issued? Don't forget that you're on the PNC as a firearms or shotgun licence holder, so they have access to that as well. And where possible, do those communications by email so they're recorded, or record them yourself. If you've got nothing to hide, you can always set a recorder on your iPhone and just record it. Devon and Cornwall Police refuse to comment on the Jake Davison case because they claim investigations are ongoing. For more on this story, including interviews with more people who've been affected, click on the link in the description. And if you've been affected, please contact us. Thanks to all for those interviews conducted at the British Shooting Show. And thanks to everyone who came onto our stand, and especially to all those who joined the Field Sports Nation. 
In last night's Field Sports Extra, which the Field Sports Nation supporters get every Tuesday and includes a weekly prize draw, we gave away more than £1,500 worth of kit, including £260 worth of Trexter boots, a deer stalking outing in Cornwall with Ollie Williams of Cornish Sporting Agency, a handmade knife from Dean Smallwood of ADG Custom Knives, a hand carved stick from Statement Sticks, and the big one a £700 game shooting simulator, as tested by Paul Childerley in last week's show. Next week, I draw the winner of a £250 clay cart, newly launched at the British Shooting Show by claycart.co.uk. If you haven't joined the Field Sports Nation, you can. There's a link in the description below. Now, from goodies to the wider world of hunting and shooting on YouTube, it is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the top hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. Thanks to Ben Maslin for sending in the latest from Shuffle Stories, Matt Tipping at the Watton Estate shows what it's like to be a British gamekeeper in winter. We've been following this year-long diary of a gamekeeper from its start. When the February storms were hitting the UK and Western Europe, Tockport Fleet in the Netherlands went out goose shooting. This is the film. Less blowy, Whole Town Media is also goose shooting in Holland. This is a roundup of the best, that is, his favourite moments of the past. Year. Some impressive catapult shooting from a moving vehicle in Pakistan thereafter, Waterhen. Midlands Vermin Control is rat hunting on a farm with a Wildcat Mark III compact and Pard NV008P well over a hundred rats down. BD hunting is after chamois in New Zealand, a buck and doe combo shot at the bottom end of the Southern Alps northern fjordland. Colton from Limitless Outdoors takes a big bull moose in one of the most remote locations in Alaska. It's DIY, arguably the coolest way to hunt in North America. And finally, Vivian Yonker sends me this, a hunt Sab's eye view of a hunt in South Devon, a fascinating insight into how the smellies think and what they do. That's it for this week. I have put all these films into a playlist for you. Click on the eye symbol top right or check this film's description. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, that's it for this week. If you haven't done so already, please whiz over to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv. You can click to like us there on Facebook and on Instagram. You can follow us on Twitter, subscribe to us on YouTube, pop your email address into our register page, and we'll contact you about this show. Field Sports Britain is at 7 pm UK time every Wednesday. And this has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing, and goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>